Hi and thank you for joining me today and today is day seven of 30 days of sketches with Christie's Beautiful Life and today's sketch in the top right hand corner comes from the lovely Ruth Lewinden who's another UK scrapper who I know and I love this sketch. I can definitely see me using this quite a few times. Uh, I'm using Spectrum Sherbet from 49er Market to document a photo of my kids when they were about eight months old and um this is a five by seven photo, so larger than the sketch suggests, but I thought it would match really well. And I've also had to flip the, the sketch because the way they're looking to the left of the page, I wanted to have the photo situated on the right hand side. So it meant the strip coming out at the bottom, the scalloped strip I needed to have coming out to the left rather than to the right. Anyway, <laughs> I've drawn a pencil line off off camera I drew a pencil line an eight and a half inch circle you can probably faintly see it there and that's what I'm going to use to add my title but at the moment you can see I'm just building up pieces of the spectrum sherbet papers underneath this photo and because it's a black and white photo I can use all the colours <laughs> all of the colours of the rainbow and that's exactly what I'm doing so just pulling out pieces that are partially cut out the six by eight paper pad and little scraps to um, build this up as I say, underneath the photo in my usual style and distressing the edges as well, just to add a little bit of texture. So starting off with this yellow piece, and I think these are all from the six by eight paper pad at the moment. That's what I tend to have most of left from this collection because I have both paper pads and you do get a lot in them. Uh, so now going onto this green piece and this had a torn edge already at the bottom. So I've just kept that torn edge to overlap at the bottom of the photo. I think that looks really nice. There's also a green piece that's already adhered to the photo there that I did just before I started telling you what I was doing. That's actually from one of the remnant pieces that was trimmed previously. I didn't need it on a previous layout and it was just thrown into the box. So <laughs> I added that to the bottom of the photo as well. This is why I love keeping scraps because you can add so much different textures, dimensions, colours, if you've got little bits and pieces left behind. So just building them up all around the photo. Cut off the excess on this blue piece because it's just going at the top and there's nothing showing on either side of the photo. I didn't see any point in using a huge piece underneath. So, and the same with this orange, just trimming off what I need and keeping the other piece for another layout. This is probably why it takes me so long to use up a collection actually, because I'm just constantly trimming bits off and uh, keeping them <laughs> just in case, you know, definitely the product of war babies. I've been taught well by my mum and dad to uh, be careful with things. <laughs> I'm quite frugal. So just almost finished now. I'm going to finish off with this pink piece as the final piece in the puzzle. So just adding that orange one and then that pink bit at the very end. I love that. It's all different pieces that you can cut apart if you want to, but it's great as a mat because you get all the different colors and prints on it. So just checking which way round and how I want it to show underneath that photo, whether I want it more at the bottom or more at the top, and I'm definitely going for more at the bottom. So I'm just going to overlap it just underneath that blue piece that's poking out. So first of all, thinking I might go above, but you'll see in a minute I move it below. <laughs> So adding glue to everything now to make sure it's well adhered. And here we go, you can see it's just below that blue piece and just poking out to the left hand side of the layout. So you get a nice piece poking underneath as well. And that provides me with the shelf to add my scallops, which is what I'm going to do now. So I've grabbed my one inch circle punch and I'm just punching half circles, no need to do full ones because I'm only using halves. And I'll start positioning those underneath the photo to create this scalloped edge. And I will keep going beyond the photo per the sketch. So I'll show you how I do that in a minute. So first of all, just positioning them to check how many I need and how long I'd like it to be. One more, I think. And now I'm going to add one of my borders, the uh, branding strips 
from the 12 by 12 papers that I've kept. And that's going to be the piece that I will adhere the rest of the scallops onto. So just doing that now, just run a thin line of glue right along the edge there, and then I can stick the scallops to it. The other ones will go underneath the photo without any bother. It's just the ones that go beyond the photo that needed something to be stuck onto. So just now nestling that underneath and then I can add those extra ones at the end. And I love creating my scallop borders like this. You could of course just draw around a circle and cut it out, but this gives a really neat edge. I say neat edge, in a minute I'm going to use my nails to rough the edges up. So <laughs> it doesn't really matter, does it? But you get the idea. So just checking everything's stuck down and now I'm going to start bringing in other bits and pieces to build up my embellishments around this area. So first of all, this frame, I think that looks really nice and I'm going to cut it in half because half of it would have been stuck behind the photo. So trimming that off. And now this mat's done, I'm going to come in with my mixed media. It wouldn't be me if I didn't add mixed media to a page. So I'm using my Inklings in um, Sage It Isn't So, I think is the one that I've used. So just drawing round the photo mat where it's going to sit on the page so that I know exactly where to add my mixed media. And then I can start coming in with this. So I'm just spraying the card stock and then adding the paint directly to the card. And that water that's on the cardstock will just allow it to bleed out and look very natural without any brush strokes. So just adding it all around the page, a bit more water into the inklings. Making sure that I go underneath that scallop border. Dotting it about. And now I'm happy with that coverage, I'm just going to go with some splatters all around this area, just to soften everything up. I do like the look of splatters on a page. And just keeping them close to that border. So now that's more or less dry, I can start building things up. So I've pulled out this film strip from the, I think this is the laser cut elements. I've got them all in a box and I pop them all off the sheets and they're all together with the ephemera. Not a lot left, so um, using that frame again that I'd chosen before. So I'm just going to glue this whole mat down and then I can carry on embellishing. Plenty of glue just to make sure it's well stuck. The card has buckled ever so slightly with the water that I added, so just wanted to make sure that everything sticks down. And I really don't mind having the card stock a little bit buckled because all of my pages are quite um, bulky, <laughs> shall we say. So they would buckle naturally in the album as they're held together. So I don't mind this. So now that frame's down, The sorry, the film strip's down, I can add this frame. Deciding whether to go over or under that scalloped border, but I decide to go underneath. And then I shall as I say, scuff up the edges of these scallops. And then carry on embellishing. So this little circle says favourite photos. Um, so I cut it in half and use half at the top there and half will go down to the side. This orange chipboard piece says shine bright and I like the look of that. And because I've used all the colours in the collection, I can continue to add all the colours in my embellishment pieces. Now that's my two inch circle punch and I'm just punching a circle, half circle to add to the top there in a different size to the uh, ring and here I am cutting it in half. Just to add different layers. I like different heights when I'm doing clusters like this. So as you see, I, I play with this a little bit deciding where it goes, but it does go to the left hand side of that frame in the end just there. Now coming in with a Hey Little Magpie flare badge. Um, this is a little, I think I change it to a little rainbow. It's from the Boho Baby Girl collection. I like it because it's quite neutral colours really. There is a little bit of pink, but um, it could be used for a boy or girl. 
And I just think that looks really pretty with these papers. So now I'm starting to glue things down. Just checking that I've got that tucked under enough. <laughs> it's hard when you're sitting away. I don't want to put my head over the layout and you get that in the shop because the camera's above. So <laughs> just being a bit careful. And now coming in with these rob-ons, I often forget these. So I'm trying to make a concerted effort to reach for them a bit more. First of all, I want to add some stitching to that orange border piece that I'm holding the scallops together with just to look as if it's stitched onto the page. And these rub-ons are absolutely fantastic. They're very pliable. So even though the paper is at a different height from the background, they do sort of bend over. They don't crack at all. So really good for adding to different heights the papers. So just quickly rub that down before carrying on. And they're so easy to apply. So now having a look at the words to add a few words to the page. And first of all, I find one that I'm going to add to that pink paper that's sticking out the left hand side of the photo. Oh, no, sorry. The first one that I add is this one and it's my heart. And that just goes on top of that strip. And the Y just hangs over the orange. And again, even though it's different levels, it works really nicely. The next one that I'm found going for is all my heart and this is going along that side of the pink card. I think about putting it on the frame but it's better up here. And it's little things like this that you barely notice but they just all add something to the page. And finally I find a phrase that says always be humble and kind and that's going to be added to that pink circle at the top of the page there. So again, just rubbing that down. And there was quite a big gap underneath that, so I decided I wanted to add something. So I'm pulling out these acetate hearts from Ellie's Studio and I've just added an orange one there and that works really nicely just to fill in that circle. This is a tiny scrap of a border strip that uh, I found in my box. So just adding that to the top again for a different colour and different height up there. And then this lace, which was from the laser cut elements, I just thought that would be nice to add underneath that scallop border. So I just tear off the edge and glue that down there. And there we go. So now I'm going to work on my titles. So I pulled out these Jane alphabet stickers from Ellie's Studio in black. I absolutely adore the shape of these stickers. I need them in every single colour now. Um, and I'm going to write the title around that circle that I'd marked out in a pencil. And the title reads Together You Two Melt Hearts, which I really like. And because there's quite a gap at the end, I decided to add one of the orange hearts again from the Ellie's Studio acetate hearts. And the date just nestles in really nicely there along that edge. So at this point, I think I'm done. But when I hold it up and have a look and come back half an hour later, I realise that the gap at the bottom of the layout is just too big for me. So um, after giving it a little bit of thought, I decide to add a cluster on the left hand side at the bottom. So that creates a diagonal line from the top right hand heart uh, circle and heart to the bottom left hand cluster at the bottom and that just fills in that bottom nicely and adds balance to the layout. So even though this wasn't on the sketch it was absolutely a necessity once I'd finished or thought I'd finished the layout. So I'm just pulling out bits and pieces from my box of Spectrum Sherbet and um, a little piece of washi tape that I'm just putting down there from the Serenity collection. What's really nice about 49 and Market collections is that they all gel really nicely together. So um, the blues in this look perfect. There's a little shelf to put along the bottom there. And then I've got this border strip of paint strips, um, a little green ticket, a tag, um, a, another piece that says you're like no other. I think that was, yes, it was from the ephemera pack. And um, then there's a uh, orange circle at the top there that I've just punched out with my hole punch. I think it was the one and a half inch hole punch that I use for that. And then I do find a little bit of pink paper in my scraps again, just um, from the, oh, what's it called? The branding strips. 
I keep calling them borders. It's a branding strip that was on the 12 by 12 papers. And I always just chuck those back in the box when I've uh, cut them off because I know that they'll come in handy eventually. There it is, just going in there. And this works out really nicely, actually. I had a couple of hearts from my deep stash and that's pretty much it. I'll add some splatters again with that green. Um, it, I think it might be I'm Not Lemon. Yes, it's the Inklings in I'm Not Lemon. It's not um, the Sage one. And that's it. So thank you so much for joining me. Please do check the description box down below to see everybody else who's been joining in on this hop. And I'll add the links to Ruth's pages. I know she's on Instagram. I'm not sure if she's got YouTube or not. I'll have to double check that. And um, other than that, I shall see you tomorrow for the next video. Thanks so much again for joining me. See you then. Bye.